Well, hello, everybody. I am crossing my fingers today that we will not have too many technical problems during this live lesson. Uh, my internet is still not working perfectly. So, please bear with me as we uh as we learn a little bit about music today. So, uh it sounds like everything's working okay and it looks like everything's working okay. So, we'll start in about 16 minutes and we'll start uh by talking about music. So, that should be a fun lesson. Let me double check a couple of things here. Let me check my audio one more time. Sounds great. Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about music. Music is a fun thing that all of us enjoy in life. Maybe you enjoy listening to music. Maybe you enjoy singing. Maybe you play a musical instrument and I'm sure there's a certain type of music. There's a certain genre that you really, really like. For me, it would be rock music but I thought it would be a good idea today to do a lesson about music to teach you some of the words and phrases that we use in English when we talk about the music that we listen to, uh the music that we enjoy, the music that is all around us. Before we get started, just a couple of things. Number one, my internet connection is a little bit flaky today. It's a little bit wonky today. As some of you know, it was a little bit weird last week. So far, so good. Things are working well and you got to learn the word flaky and wonky. <laughs> the words flaky and wonky and so far, so good as a phrase. So, we'll see how things go. Number two, this is a lesson that I have done in the past. I had a very busy week. When I have a busy week, I pull up an old lesson and I add some new words to it and change some things about it. So, parts of this lesson might be familiar to some of you but uh I think I added about 12 new words as well and removed some words. So, it's a little bit of a different lesson. So, please uh enjoy it as much as you can. I do wanna thank Todd and Dave for being here. Uh Todd, I'm not sure if Dave's here yet but Todd and Dave as I noted, um the internet might be a little weird today. So, please uh make sure people understand if there's some buffering just to be patient. I think uh we will get through this. Um and then why don't you guys all have great um uh conversations in the chat. Why don't you each uh take the time to have good English conversations. I'm gonna do one little check before I continue. For me, things seem to be working good so far. So, hopefully, we can get through this. Let's get this lesson started. So, the thing that is central to music is something called a song. Songs are ancient things. They are like poems but when you say them, your voice goes up and down using different musical notes. So, it's really cool when you are able to sing a song. Many of you probably have sung your national anthem. So, when you sing a song, you use the verb to sing. The past tense is sung. You could say last week, I uh sang a song. Oh, wait. I just changed it, didn't I? He will sing. I sing. I sung a song. I sang a song. Interesting. I better research that verb. But anyways, a song is something that someone has written. Something that someone has invented that all of us can use uh to sing and enjoy some words. Uh sometimes you can just whistle a song as well if you don't know the words or you can hum along. Posed. If it has lyrics, if it has words, it usually has a section called a verse and it has a section called a chorus. The verse is part of the song that tells a little bit of the story and then the chorus is usually a part that's repeated sometimes between each verse. So, you might sing verse one of the song and then you will sing the chorus and then you might sing verse two and then the chorus. There's also something called a bridge. Sometimes a song will have a bridge between the chorus and the verse or between the verse and the chorus but generally, a basic song usually has about three or four verses and then a chorus that people sing in between. Um yes, I can see the internet is acted wonky. Hopefully, things come back to normal in just a bit for you. So, when you sing a song, when the lead singer in a band sings a song, they sing the melody. 
the melody is the part of the song uh where you sing the words to. There are probably many other notes being played uh during the song but when you sing a song, you usually sing the melody. There might be also a drum or a piano or some other instrument playing other parts to the song that might be in harmony to the melody um but generally when you sing a song, you are singing the melody. We also have the English word tune and we use the word tune in a funny way. You could say, I listened to some tunes in my car the other day or I'm going to put in my ear earbuds and listen to some tunes uh while I go for a run. We also use it to talk about when you make an instrument play the correct notes. You can tune a guitar before you play it so that when you uh play each string, it plays the proper frequency, the proper note. So, tune has a number of different uses. The informal uh kind of slang use of it is just another word for song. You know, he sang a lovely tune the other day while I was working with him or I'm going to listen to some tunes. We also call them tracks. Sometimes you will have a track list or a playlist. Uh you might hear on the radio that Adele has a has a new track out right now. Um so that just means song. I think track has been used for a very long time. Uh since the day I'm just buffering here myself. So, I'm just waiting to see if things are connecting. It looks like things are working again. Let me just uh pause for a moment here and I will get back to the lesson. So, hopefully things are working. I think so. I'm gonna continue. Uh yep. So, all music is composed of notes. There are quarter notes, whole notes, eighth notes and those determine the length of the note. And where it appears on the staff is the frequency or the note that gets played. Someone who writes a song is called a composer or a songwriter. So, you might know someone who likes to sit down occasionally and put notes on a page. They maybe might whistle to themselves or sit at a piano playing some notes and then they'll put them on the page. We would call that person a composer or a songwriter. Um if someone is a songwriter and they also sing, we might call them a singer songwriter. So, a composer or a songwriter is someone who writes songs. Notice we use the verb to write when we talk about songs. So, when you create a song, the verb we use most often is the verb to write. Um he likes to write songs. She likes to write songs. Someone who plays an instrument is called a musician. This person is playing a guitar. So, we could also call him a guitarist but generally when you talk about someone who can play one or two or more instruments, we refer to them as musicians, okay? So, you might be a musician. You might play one or two instruments. You might be in a band with some other musicians. So, musician is the general term for anyone who can play a musical instrument. Singer is the general term for someone who sings. Not everyone can sing. I am not a very good singer. I have trouble singing uh the correct notes. I'm always out of tune. So, there's the word tune again. When I sing what should be a C note, it probably sounds a little bit too high or low. I have trouble singing in tune but a person who sings is called a singer. We sometimes uh call singers artists as well. Usually, if someone writes songs, is able to play instruments and is able to sing, if they can do all of those things, we will often refer to them as an artist because they've mastered so many parts of the music making process. So, someone like Ed Sheeran, you might hear him referred to as an artist. That doesn't mean he paints. (laughs) That doesn't mean that he gets out paint and he makes paintings. We use the word artist sometimes to refer to people who also create music, perform music, uh, write music uh, and are able to sing and play instruments. 
If you go to a club or if you go to a bar or if you go to a discotheque, I don't know if those exist anymore. There will most likely be a DJ. This is a short version for disc jockey. A disc jockey is someone who plays music so that people can dance. So, you'll see here this disc jockey, this DJ is uh playing some tunes. He's playing some tracks for people. Those tracks or tunes probably have a really good beat so that people can really start to move. Um by the way, I might dance a little bit in the next video on Tuesday when I responded to Mode Egg's assumption about me. I might have to look forward to that. We'll see. Hey, let's look at some questions. Uh I apologize once again that the internet dropped out a couple of times there but it seems to be somewhat working again. So, let's just uh continue on. Here we go from Renata. Good morning, Bob. Are you going to talk about the musical notes? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. In Portuguese, they are do, re, mi, fa, so, la. Oh, and we say do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, I think. Have a great day, sir. Thank you. No, I'm not going to talk in depth about musical notes uh but what I will say is that different parts of the world have different scales. So, your music might sound different uh in depending on what country you are from and what musical scale you use. Let's see here. Um Ruslan says, hi, dear teacher Bob. Music is like a diary. It invokes the feelings you had when you listened to the track in the past. What's your favorite pop, rock and rap tracks now? So, right now, I am very much enjoying um what was the song I just listened to yesterday? Oh, I'm trying to think. There was a new song I think uh I think it was by the Zach Brown band. Uh Fun Having Fun. It's a country song. It's a little bit silly but that's a track that I'm uh, enjoying right now. And I agree. Music does bring back memories. In fact, there are some songs that can be hard to listen to because you listen to those songs at a time in your life when you were sad. There's also songs that are very enjoyable because you listened to those songs when you were having when you were at a happy point in your life. Uh let's see your next question. Yaroslav, morning the wisest teacher Bob. Do you think it is okay or not to download music illegally? Take care. Have an easy weekend ahead. So, I don't. We have Amazon Music. So, we are able to listen to any music we want. I think generally, you probably should pay for your music. People work very hard to make that music. So, at least uh get a service like Google Music or Amazon Music uh or um yeah, buy your music on iTunes. I think that's the best route to go. Uh next question is from Mode. Someday I plan to take up a string instrument. Oh, I just used Tuesday's lesson. Which one should I pick? Okay, let me end this on a high note before I start talking. King jarring nonsense. So, I think that playing a string instrument is very difficult. If I was to learn to play an instrument, I think I would choose piano. Not that it's easier but it's it's a little simpler to play a note on a piano to, as a beginner than to play on a guitar I think. So, I don't know. Someday, I might uh, do something like that. Sean says, hello, teacher Bob. Can I improve my speaking skills by listening to music in English? Well, you can improve your listening skills. You can improve your speaking skills if you sing along. So, I think it's important to memorize the lyrics, memorize the words to the song and then when you are listening to it, try to sing along. I think that's a good thing to do. Yeah, we seem to be in a sweet spot with the internet right now. Maybe I should knock on wood so that it doesn't drop out on us. Henry from Taiwan. Hi, teacher Bob. Do you like classical music? Which classical musician are you familiar with the most? Thank you. Probably Beethoven is the most common uh musician. Um and yes, I do like classical music to some degree but I don't listen to it regularly. It's not something I have on my playlist. Or ha- I don't have a playlist of classical music. Uh let's see here. So, Layla says, hi, it's a long time. Haven't watched your live. 
I got married, okay, one month ago. Ha- <laughs> Congratulations. And I'm back to learn English. What do you know about African music? I do not know a lot and I should explore that a little bit. Most of the music that I listen to comes from Canada or the United States or from France or Belgium or Quebec because I do like French music as well. Winter White, right. Hi, Bob. Is there any songs or music for funerals in Canada? What kinds of music are they? It depends on the type of funeral. So, generally, if it's a religious ceremony, whatever religion that person was, there are probably songs that are usually used at that funeral. So, that would probably be the biggest indicator um depending on what religion that person followed. If the person wasn't religious, in fact, I was at a funeral once for someone who wasn't a religious person and they still sang some religious songs. So, um but I can't think of any uh winter off the top of my head. Kurdish says, why do people think sad music and someone they don't like it? Are they phenomena or it's biological? I think music can be sad just by how it sounds. It can depend on the uh yeah, this yeah, it's played. If it's a lot of minor chords and if there's a lot of dissonance notes that don't really match, the song can be sad or it can be a little bit angry sounding. So, that can be one thing that can happen. Did I jinx the end by saying yeah, there's a few glitches again. Well, hopefully, the audio keeps going well. Let's um let's pop back to the lesson. Let's keep moving on the lesson. So, if you play something, that thing is called a musical instrument. There are musical instruments uh of all different shapes and sizes. Um anything that humans have been able to use to make sounds with, they've usually created a musical instrument. So, if they could make sounds by blowing through a stick, they made musical instruments. If you could make a sound by plucking a string, we've made that into a musical instrument. Um if you are really good at playing music, if you are a good singer, we say that you have talent or we say that you are talented. So, I have friends who are very talented. They not only know how to play guitar, they're really good guitarists. They are really good at playing guitar. They are talented. I know at school, sometimes I will have a student in my class who's very talented, who's someone who's a good singer. They are very talented. They have a lot of talent. If you are starting out playing an instrument, you usually take lessons just like you're taking English lessons. If you wanted to learn to play the guitar, you would take guitar lessons. The way we talk about lessons in English is we just put the instrument name in front. So, you can take drum lessons. You can take guitar lessons. You can take flute lessons. You can take try to think of another musical instrument trumpet lessons. So, you simply say the name of the instrument and then the word lesson. And if you are taking lessons, you need to practice a lot. Practice makes perfect. In fact, learning English and learning to play an instrument are very similar. If you want to be really good at playing an instrument, you need to practice a lot. If you want to be really good at speaking English, you need to practice a lot. So, practice is something you do every day in order to get better at playing that musical instrument. Usually, after you go to a lesson, your teacher will tell you, please do this for practice between now and next week's lesson. So, practice is something that you do in order to get better and better at playing an instrument. A few uh of the more common instruments in North America, I'll go through these somewhat quickly. We have the acoustic guitar. That is a guitar that does not plug into an amplifier. It's simply a hollow piece of wood or other material with strings and you can play it no matter where you are. An electric guitar is a guitar that you plug into an amplifier. It has definitely a different sound than an acoustic guitar Um, and I think it's a little different to play it as well. I think the neck is a little narrower on an electric guitar. There's the piano which has keys. It has white keys and black keys Uh, and when you learn to play the piano, uh, you learn to play with your right hand and then you learn to play with your left hand 
and there's pedals on the bottom too that do various things. There are drums which some people find to be too loud. Sometimes when people have children who are taking drum lessons, they make them practice in the garage or they make them practice in the basement far away from other people because drums can be quite loud. But drums are used to add um so that the song has a beat. Um there's usually cymbals on a drum set as well as a bass drum and a uh snare drum and people use that to basically create the rhythm or the beat when the song is being played. If you play any instrument um you probably can be in a band. A band doesn't have to be a rock band. If a band plays rock music, we call it a rock band. But when a group of people get together and each person plays a different instrument um and if one of the people or a couple of the people sing, we call it a band. So, here you see these people have formed a band. That's the English uh word that we use. We'll say, oh, my nephew is forming a band. My nephew and some of his friends have formed a band um and then usually a band will pick a name. Sometimes it's a cool name. Sometimes it's a little bit strange but uh a band is a group of people who play different instruments together and they perform songs or they record songs. You might play in an orchestra or you might go see an orchestra. Uh when you go to an orchestra, you'll notice that people play older styles of instruments. They play things like the violin. They play things like the cello. They play things like the timpani which is a kind of drum. The orchestra usually plays mm-hmm. classical music but sometimes plays modern music as well. But you can see uh this orchestra, the people look a little bit um older than the people in the band. There's a little bit more gray hair but that's not always true with an orchestra but um definitely young people tend to form rock bands and I think older people play in things like jazz quartets or orchestras. You might sing in a choir or you might know someone who sings in a choir. A choir is a group of people that get together and sing. They might be accompanied by a piano or an organ or another instrument but generally a choir is a group of 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or 100 people who all get together and uh learn songs and sing songs uh so that they can perform them. So, you'll see here a choir is getting ready to perform. It's quite common to go and see choirs perform around Christmas. There are usually a lot of choirs um that perform outdoors and at other events during the Christmas season in North America. You might go and see a musical. So, a musical is a play where they don't just act and have speaking parts. They also break out into song during the play and that's how we describe it. So, this is a play called Mamma Mia based on the songs of the band ABBA. So, I called it a play but it's really a musical. So, when you go, they act and then after a few minutes of acting, one of the characters in the play will break out into song and then they will do a song and then it will become a play again and then they'll do a song and we would call that a musical. Musicals are a lot of fun. Uh, I've actually seen Mamma Mia. I saw it in Toronto many, many years ago uh, with Jen. It was pretty cool to go and see it. It's called a soundtrack. So, a soundtrack is um the music that you heard when you went to see a movie. So, if you went to see Guardians of the Galaxy which was a movie that came out a few years ago, it had a really cool soundtrack. The songs that you kind of heard in the background or during big scenes in the movie, you can buy all of those songs either you know on iTunes or you could actually go to the store and buy a CD still and we would call that a soundtrack. You can't quite see it. Let's make this a bit bigger but here it says Guardians of the Galaxy original motion picture soundtrack. It says that down there. I know it's a little hard to read. Uh so, a soundtrack is um all of the songs that you heard from a movie. So, different movies have different soundtracks. Sometimes movies have very popular soundtracks and everyone likes the songs. Sometimes no one even remembers the songs from the soundtrack. 
where am I here? Concert. So, a concert is any kind of live performance of music. There have not been very many concerts lately in the world. Uh, concerts were one of the first things that got shut down but now there are concerts scheduled in Canada for the spring. So, if you want to go see a certain band, you can go to a concert. I think starting in April or May, we will once again have concerts in Canada but uh, concerts are fun. It's where a whole bunch of people buy tickets. You buy a ticket for the concert and you go and you sit or stand. Usually, you stand um, if it's a really good concert and you listen to music that is performed live by a band. Concerts are super super fun to go to. Hey, I'm gonna switch to um members only chat a little bit early right now. So, let me do that for a sec. Let me get to the members only chat section here. Let me get that set up. We'll go with members. I do wanna say thank you to all of my members uh for being here and for hanging out especially considering I'm having a few little internet buffering problems but thank you so much for being here. If you are a member, you can ask questions directly in the chat right now and I will continue um answering questions from the form as well. Uh philosopher Mickey says, oh philosopho Mickey. Hey, mister Bob, have you ever heard the girl from Ipanema? It's a Brazilian song that also was recorded by Michael Sinatra. Not sure if you're a jazz person. I'm not a jazz person. One of my kids likes jazz but I'm not a big fan of jazz um and I have not heard that song. What I'll do is I'll try and look it up at some point and uh listen to it. Let's see. Next question is from Kavish and then I'll jump to the chat. Hi, Bob. Does sing and belt out resemble each other? Yeah, you can sing a song or you can belt out a song. When you belt out a song, it means you sing it really loudly and with a lot of intensity. Uh and want to know whether they re- resemble deserves to be put in the previous sentence. No, we would say do sing and belt out mean the same thing. That's how we would do that. Um that's how we would ask that question. Mode Egg says, ladies and gentlemen, let's give Mr. Bob a standing ovation. <laughs> yeah. Maybe give me a standing ovation after I politely call my internet provider after this lesson and ask why things haven't been fixed yet. I'll try to remain very calm and polite. Uh Marwanto says, hi, Freddie Wolf. Hi, Bob. The orchestra plays also often the soundtracks for movies, don't they? Yes. Movies like Star Wars. The soundtrack for Star Wars was I think by John Williams. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh definitely orchestras sometimes play the soundtrack for movies. Lolly lolly. Bonjour Bob. Do your children play a musical instrument? All of our kids have had piano lessons. Not all of them still play piano but all of them have had some piano lessons. Uh Key Park. Hi, Bob. We learned a kind of numbered notation in school when I was little. Have you ever heard about that? No, I don't know a lot about numbered notation or reading notes or different ways to read a musical uh score or anything like that. Mode Egg says, hi, mister Bob. Where's your baton? You know you're the conductor of this lesson. I don't have conductor on the slides. I should have done that. Julia says, hi, dear teacher. I love this topic. I have a question. Can you concentrate on other things when you're listening to music? It depends what I'm doing. Um I often listen to music when I'm driving my tractor. I often listen to music when I'm driving my car. I don't listen to music when I'm working on something on my computer because I get distracted. So, it depends. Maria C. Hi, Bob. If you were going to spend the rest of your life on an island, which band's music would you take with you? I would take the music of Rush I think with me. I think that's who I would take. Although, Yeah, I don't know. I really like yeah, I would it would be Rush I think. Yeah, maybe the Rolling Stones. Mode eggs. Sometimes when I listen to a song a lot, I can't refrain from repeating its catchy refrain in my head. Yes, that's the cool thing about music. You like listening to it over and over again and I've mentioned this too many times probably but that's what makes it great for learning English is that repetition that you can enjoy. Uh let's see here. Kaiseta Bob, it was a pleasure for me to learn that you would choose a piano. I like piano very much. I can play the piano a little. I can play the piano a tiny bit. 
I did have piano lessons for a small amount of time when I was a kid. Just a couple of months or so. Norma, hello, Bob. Incidental music is so important in movies to enhance some particular scenes or situations. Yes, especially like if you think of the movie they play during a car chase or the mu- the movie, the music they play during a car chase or the music they play when someone's sneaking around in the dark. Definitely, music is very important in a movie. Uh, Julia, I asked this question because in movies, I can see doctors make surgeries and they are listening to music at the same time. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe that does help them block out all of the distractions when they listen to music. That could be. Mode, eggs. You're a rock fan. I wonder if you listen to Linkin Park. That is not a band that I got into. So, when you get into a band, it means you really like them. Um so, I don't I don't even know any of their songs. If I heard them, I probably would recognize the song but I I wouldn't identify it as a song from Lincoln Park. Betty Lou, hi the cutest teacher Bob. Have you been to any concerts? If so, can you share a little bit about that? Have fun while doing this live stream. I have seen Billy Joel in concert. I have seen the Rolling Stones in concert and I'm trying to think. There was another band. I can't I've lost my memory. Those are the two bands I've seen in concert. Adi the tie. Hi, Bob. The first song that I had to show to our young guys in party was Sundown by Gordon Lightfoot. We practiced more than a hundred times before the show and that show more than 50 years ago. Sundown by Gordon Lightfoot. Gordon Lightfoot, I believe, is Canadian. So, Sundown, you better take care. I think that's how the song goes. Freddie Wolf. Hi, Bob. What kinds of music do your children listen to? Are they sometimes laughing a little bit at you for your choice of music that you listen to? A bit. They listen to all kinds of things. They listen to Ed Sheeran. They listen to The Weeknd. They listen to Taylor Swift. Um depending on which kid. They they all have completely uh different tastes in music and I think they like some of the old stuff. Um I know my one kid does like some of the older music uh and doesn't mind listening to it. Uh Ophilo Safo Mickey says, hey, Mr. Bob, as a farmer, do you like country music such as Alan Jackson or John Denver? And John Denver. Yesterday, I was singing in the shower Lovin on Love at 5 a.m. I do, I like John Denver. I don't really listen to a lot of country music. Jen does like country music though. So, we do hear quite a bit of country music. If I get in the van after Jen has driven the van, usually the radio is on a country music station. Um let's see here. Kaiseta, I like orchestra very much. I mean, live music. What about you, dear? I like, I definitely like seeing things live. It's a lot of fun. Anywat, are you singing or listening to music when you work or take a walk? For me, I can't do anything when I work out. When I go for a walk, I do not listen to music because when I go for my walk, that's when I like to think about the next English lesson I'm going to make on YouTube. I I think about things that I need to think about when I go for my walk. So, that's why I don't listen to music. Stacy says, I'm a big fan of rock music. Smashing Pumpkins is one of my favorite rock bands. I remember you mentioned the band in in the class with the topic of Halloween. Yes, Billy Corgan, Smashing Pumpkins. Yes, definitely a a band that played a pivotal pivotal role um in the change of music in that era. Betty Lou, hi, the cutest teacher Bob. Do you like dancing? I do. I talk about it in my next video. I might even dance a little bit in my next video. You'll have to see. Mode eggs. I'm sorry. I'm hyper and chatty today. I don't mean to make light of the wonky internet situation. I hope the rest of the lesson goes smoothly. I hope it does too. I mean, we're halfway. So, halfway is good. Uh let me go back to the slides. Actually, let me not go back to the slides yet. Let me turn off members only chat. I know I did it at a slightly different time than normal today but that's okay. It was about halfway through, right? So, I think we're good but let's uh let's get back to the lesson. Here we go. So, I mentioned live performances. When you see a a band play live, if someone says, I'm going to see Ed Sheeran live, it means you're going to a concert and they're going to be up on a stage and you're going to see them. You're going to be in a stadium or an arena and you're going to see a live performance. Sometimes, restaurants or bars will hire a band and then they'll have a sign out front that says live music Friday and Saturday or live music Saturday night and uh people enjoy live music. 
I don't have a slide for karaoke but people also enjoy singing karaoke. Sometimes people will go to a restaurant or bar and they will sing karaoke. That's where the song is played but there's no words and you sing the words as you read them off the screen. When you go to a live performance, there is a stage. The stage is the area at the front where the band will be. Uh so, sometimes people like to be close to the stage. Sometimes people like to be very far away from the stage. If you're right in front of the stage, you have front row seats. If you are really far back, and really high up at the back. We call it the nosebleed section. I don't know why we call it that in English but if you are at the very very back of a concert uh and really high up at the back, we call it the nosebleed section. Like, oh, you saw Ed Sheeran? Yeah. Did you have seats close to the front? No, we were in the nosebleed section. If you go to a park in Canada, some of our parks have what's called a band shell or a bandstand. This is a small outdoor building or it can be kind of large that is built for the purpose of people performing outside for people to perform live. So, a band shell or bandstand is basically a stage. It's a raised platform with a partial roof over top so that if there's bad weather, the uh the band uh, or the performers don't get wet. Uh there are quite a few parks I was gonna say near us. The bigger cities tend to have a band shell or a bandstand. Um but uh yeah, there is definitely one in the town close to me to the south. They have a band shell bandstand. There's something called the charts. So, a song can be on the charts. Um the most common chart is called the billboard 100. That's a chart in the United States where the company decides what songs are the most popular. So, right now, you could say, oh, Adele has a new song on the charts or Adele's song is number one on the charts. So, the charts simply refer to what song people have listened to and downloaded and requested. Which songs are the most popular ranked in order from one to ten or one to a hundred. So, I do think right now on the charts, I think Adele has a hit song. Uh, easy on me and I think right now Adele has the number one song on the charts. She has a hit song. So, again, the charts are the ranking of the songs that are the most pop from most popular and then as you go down, they're a little bit less popular and right now, Adele has a number one song. She has a hit song and it is number one on the charts. We also have something called a greatest hits album or just greatest hits. If you like the band ABBA, you can buy ABBA Gold which is a collection of their greatest hits. So, as ABBA was releasing songs through the 70s and 80s, many of those songs were really high on the charts. Some probably even hit number one and so, you would say that ABBA had a lot of hits. They had a lot of songs that were very very popular and they put them all together on one album and it's called ABBA Gold. So, if you are an ABBA fan, if you really really like ABBA, you most likely have um this album somewhere, ABBA Gold. I'm gonna ignore the phone, okay? Um it's nothing important and if it is, I'm sure Jen will answer it. There are a number of different genres. I used the word genre when I started this lesson. There are a lot of different musical genres. One genre is country music. Another genre is rock music. We also call this rock and roll, rock and roll but usually we just call it rock now, rock music. So, rock music is probably one of the most popular genres in North America. We also have classical which was mentioned earlier. Classical music is usually played on instruments like violins or flutes or oboes. Um, violins and oboes and flutes produce a really nice sound and orchestras usually play classical music using those instruments. We have jazz. Jazz is a type of music where the song has structure but as people play the song, they play around within the structure of the song, okay? So, a jazz song will not I'm gonna say a jazz song is rarely the same every time it is played because people take time to improvise and they play 
whatever they feel like playing at certain points in the song. Jazz is a very, very cool type of music. I don't listen to a lot of jazz but um it is a cool type of music, a cool genre. We have rap of course which is usually a beat with some sort of melody in the background and then the person instead of singing usually speaks the words. They might actually sing a little bit as they speak the words but generally a rap song uh is characterized. A rap song generally has someone just speaking the words to a beat. Rap is a very, very popular type of music. Very, very popular genre. We have pop music. I know ABBA uh, is an older band but uh, right now uh, pop music refers to popular music. It's the music that you're most likely to hear when you're at the mall or when you turn on the radio. It is the most popular kind of music for that day. So, we shorten it of course to pop music. Uh, ABBA was a very, very uh, famous band in the 70s and 80s and they are putting on a new show in London starting later I think in 2022 um where you can go and see ABBA but they're holograms. That should be very, very interesting I think. Um we have lyrics and words. Actually, I was gonna pause here. Let me pause here and go to some questions and then we'll finish the lesson off in just a bit. Uh let's see here. Guyo says, hi teacher Bob. Can you sing your favorite song? No, I can't sing my favorite song. There's a couple problems with me singing my favorite song. Um by the way, my favorite song changes all the time. Uh one of the problems is that if I sing a song on YouTube then uh, the video gets demonetized and I can't have ads on it. So, and I do like making a little bit of money from the advertisements. Uh Freddie, no French singer. Hi, Bob. I hope you're well. When you were a student, did you learn music theory at school and would you be able to play an instrument and which would you prefer? Thanks. So, at school. So, first of all, I took piano lessons privately. My sisters took piano lessons. And for a couple of months, I took piano lessons but I ended up quitting. At school, there's only two music classes that I had. Um I learned to play the recorder in grade four which is like a plastic um instrument with woodwind I guess. You blow and there's holes in it. Um and then in university, I took what's called a music appreciation class where you learn to listen to music and appreciate it. Um and if I did play an instrument, I think I would, I would learn piano. Lou says, hello, teacher Bob. Did you listen to some Chinese songs? Can you sing it? Hope you have a good weekend. I have not listened to a lot of Chinese music. I have definitely heard Chinese music though um and especially Chinese rock music. I've heard a few uh bands from students of mine. They've played me some songs and it's definitely very interesting. Very, very interesting. Uh let's see here. Um two things to go. One, what do you prefer? R&B or pop? Probably pop. So, R&B is like rock and blues. R&B. It's kind of a mixture of the blues and rock or pop. Recommend a rock song. Uh let's see. Um I can't think of a rock song off the top of my head. Closer to the Heart by Rush is a great song. Very easy to understand. So, try that one. It's an old song but it's good. Uh and I hope we have a better internet connection today. Well, It's kind of working. Let's put it that way. Um let's see here. Tai says, hello, teacher Bob. What is your most favorite song? I love Dragonis Dragasia Dinte. Oh, the Numa Numa song. Yeah, that's a fun song, eh? I remember that was very popular uh on the internet about uh eight or nine years ago. There was a a popular meme video of uh, someone singing that song. Very, 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 very cool song. David Wu. Bob, will you dance in your next video? So, the video coming out Tuesday is a video where I respond to things people assumed about me and all I can say this is Mode Ags posted an assumption. He actually posted two but I took the one about just the one about dancing. Um so, you might yeah, you might see me dance a little bit in my next video. You'll have to wait and see. Who knows? Yes, I do. I do actually dance. Um let's see. I'll pass the exam. Hi, Bob. What kind of music do you like the the least? Have fun. I'm not a big fan of a genre of music called thrash metal. So, thrash metal is very, very 
So, there's rock and then there's heavy metal and then there's thrash metal where the guitars are very played very quickly and loud and the singer screams almost when they're singing. That is not my favorite type of music. Um definitely a little bit of an acquired taste we would say. Um Lemon Cute says, so next week I will watch you dance, right? It's great but can I watch a cute couple dancing together in a romantic atmosphere? I will not be dancing with Jen um if that's what you're asking. It will be a, just a little a little jig I called it. Devil, do you think there is bad music in the world? So, some people do think that certain genres of music are bad. Um generally, I would say this. There are some genres of music that don't interest me. I wouldn't say they're bad. They just aren't. They don't appeal to me. They don't interest me. Um so, whether it's bad or not, I'm not sure. It depends. I'm sure there's some kind of genre that's a little bit strange and odd and maybe a little bit bad. Okay, let me get back. Let's finish this lesson off while the internet seems to be working. So, lyrics or words. I've mentioned this a few times. When a song has words that can be sung, then we call those lyrics or we call those words. Uh in French, I think you call them paroles, les paroles. Yes. So, the lyrics are written by a lyricist or the words are written by a lyricist. Sometimes, someone writes a song and someone else writes the lyrics. So, maybe in a band, one person writes the music and another person writes the lyrics and we would call them a lyricist. A song often has a rhythm or beat um and it might change throughout the song. There might be a different tempo during the chorus uh, or the verse but usually the rhythm or beat uh is played. In a rock band, the drummer and bass guitarist usually keep the beat and the bass guitarist and the rhythm guitarist keep the rhythm. What beat and rhythm are somewhat simpler. It's how the notes are organized. Um the tempo and speed at which they're played together. Um sometimes um I think about the days when I had albums. So, when I was very very young, my uncle gave my brother and I all his rock albums. Albums by Bob Seger and Deep Purple. We had a whole stack of albums and then we would take them out of their sleeve and put them on my dad's record player and we would read the album cover. All of those words and phrases I just used don't really exist in common English too much anymore because everyone just listens to songs on their iPhone or on their phone but way back when, album covers used to be beautifully designed and you would have this big album that you could open up. We also call it a record. So, inside there would be a vinyl record. I actually think that was a really fun era. Sometimes the album cover or the jacket as it was sometimes called would have all the lyrics to the songs inside of it. So, it was really fun to play a record on a record player to drop the needle onto the record and to kind of read the lyrics in the album cover while you listen to it. Then we moved on to CDs or compact discs. Many people still listen to music off of CDs. We still have many many CDs in our house but we don't uh listen to them very often because as I mentioned, we have Amazon Music which is a streaming music service and we use that to listen to music. Most people though listen to music off of iTunes. So, they will buy songs on iTunes. They will have playlists on iTunes of their favorite songs. They might have a playlist on their phone on iTunes for when they work out. They might have a playlist for when they do homework if they're a student. They might have a playlist for when they go for a walk but definitely, I would say the most common way to listen to music right now is probably to use your phone and to listen to it with something like iTunes. When someone sings by themselves, it's a solo, okay? So, you might have a band that has more than one singer and when the person starts to sing by themselves and the instrument stop, we say they're singing a solo. Sometimes, we would say a cappella. That means without instruments but uh we also have it where sometimes during a performance, the guitarist will play a guitar solo. So, the rest of the band will stop or they'll play a little more quietly and the guitarist will have the light on them 
and they will play really, really, a really, really cool part of the song and we call that a guitar solo. Sometimes you'll have a drum solo as well. A drum solo would be the same. It's when the rest of the band stops playing and singing or they play a little bit and the featured uh musician for that time is the drummer. So, we would call that a drum solo. And when two people sing together, we call it a duet. There are some very, very common or very famous duets in the world that people have sung in the past. Um for some reason, I can't think of one right now but I think Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton sing a duet. Um I think there is a very popular duet. Now, I'm losing track. Sorry. Um but a duet is when two people sing a song together. I had an example in my mind and then I forgot it. Should I just search up uh common duets? Maybe I should do that. No, let's just go back to questions. The lesson uh is almost done. We made it through the major part of the lesson without too many problems. Let me get to Rebecca. Hi, Bob. I have been learning from your video for half a year. It's my first time to join in the stream. Well, welcome. I want to ask you what's the difference between stanza and verse? I think stanza is just an older word for verse. The song has four stanzas. The song has four verses. I think that's probably uh yes, that's definitely uh how I would describe that. Kaiseta, dear Bob, can you play any musical instrument? A tiny bit of piano but I don't even know if I could play one song. Uh what music instrument would you like to play? The piano. Do you like the harmonica? Yes, I had one as a kid. I got one for Christmas once and I didn't play it very much. I played it for about a week or two and I never really learned a song. I think it's very difficult to play the harmonica. I think it is too. Let's see. I'm gonna skip the next question because it's not about music. Jocelyn though has a question. Hi, Mr. Bob. Is there any traditional dance in Canada you like the most? I like a pair from my country, Marinera and Saya. They both have beautiful music and choreography. So, traditional dances in Canada are usually dances from the country where that person's family came from. So, Canada has a lot of people who immigrated to Canada or they are descendants of immigrants. So, Canada itself um our first nations people definitely have traditional dances. Um so but I would say most other dances people would consider traditional are actually like a traditional Hungarian dance or a traditional um Spanish dance or a traditional um Vietnamese dance. They're they're definitely dances from the country their family originally came from. Uh let's see here. Uh, Let's see. Um just kind of going through here. I think yeah, here we go. Vladimir. Hi, dear teacher Bob. Do you do they listen to classical music in your family? Thanks a lot for your answer. Have a nice day. My dad liked classical music and we would often in the barn when we were milking cows, he would play all kinds of music. Classical music, polka music, He had a quite a wide range in tastes of music. From Putin, hi, Bob. Do you believe that music can heal emotional and spiritual wounds? I definitely think music has a healing quality. It definitely soothes the brain and the mind and the spirit. So, yes, I think music is just good. I think it's good for the soul. Nahid says, what's your go-to music radio station in the car? I like to listen to Q107 from Toronto. Um they usually play lots of classic rock. So, I do like that station. Uh let's see here. From Dulio. Hi, teacher Bob. What a great, great topic. I was just playing the guitar right now when I was notified by YouTube about your live stream. Well, thanks for uh listening in while you strum away, Dulio. Let's see here. From Naho. Hi, Bob. What's a famous Canadian band? I always enjoy your live lessons. Thank you. So, Rush. Rush is probably the the most famous Canadian band. Though, if you say Canadian singer, then you have to think about Justin Bieber or Celine Dion or Shania Twain or The Weeknd. But the most famous Canadian band 
I would say is probably a band called Rush. Um let's see here. From Airy. Music takes over. Makes me laugh. Makes me cry. Makes me dance. Don't you think that music is a kind of drug? Well, music definitely has an effect on people. I wouldn't say it's a drug but it certainly can lighten your mood. It can make you happy. It can make you excited. It can make you sad. Music can certainly cause you to experience um emotions. Kizmo. Hi, teacher Bob. How are you? How have you ever sung a song in public? If yes, how do you feel? Thanks. I have not personally ever sang in public. I think I sang in a video once though. I think I sang the ABC song. I can't remember but uh n- no, I I'm not a good singer and I I don't think I would like to sing in public. Uh Hobart says, hi, teacher Bob. Hope everything is okay. What's the most popular song do you usually sing in your daily life? Thank you. Probably the most common music that's being played in our house is either Ed Sheeran uh, or other current popular songs. That's uh I don't usually sing along but we I've listened to a lot of Ed Sheeran in the last year or two. Uh let's see here. Ario says, hello, I'm late. The oldest songs are the best. How do you think? I think so. I almost lost my favorite old songs. However, I remember some of the old songs now. Old songs are fun. I do like old songs. I would agree. Uh let's see here. I think we're almost done here. This is from Gustavo. My favorite international rock band is Rush. What is yours? I would say I really do like Rush. I like Rush. I like the Rolling Stones. I like some of those older bands from the 70s and early 80s. I think that uh, definitely uh, a lot of fun. Hey folks, we made it to the end. I know there were a few glitches along the way but thank you for uh sticking it out. Thank you for hanging in here. Thank you to the 415 people who are still watching. Remember, this lesson will come out again in a couple days in a shorter format. Uh that will be uh a format where I remove the user questions It's great just to listen to it or watch it one more time. Uh hit the play button on it when it comes out and just uh listen to it while you're doing dishes or eating breakfast or going for a walk. Repetition, listening to something more than once when you're learning English is just good. It's a little bit boring but it's really good for training your ear. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I'm going to get going I actually don't have to go to work today but the next thing I'm going to do is call my internet service provider once again to see what's going on with my internet and why I'm getting so many um buffering things when I do live streams. Anyways, no live stream tomorrow. It's my day off but there is a new video coming out Tuesday which I think you will enjoy. Anyways, thanks for being here. Let me say bye to a few people. Bye to Ricardo and the English Super Boo fan, Key Park, Lolly Lolly, Ario, Maria C, and you watch Julia. Uh, bye to uh Dulio, Lolly Lolly again, I guess. Lemon Cute, Mike Zhang, uh Eugene from Etobicoke, Mode Eggs. Um let's see here as I scroll back. Yes, just bye to everybody. Bye to Dave and Todd. Thanks for hanging out. Uh have a great day everyone and I will uh, see you Tuesday with a new video and I'll see you next Friday with another live lesson.